talk about this more with Mike Huckabee. He was the governor of Arkansas from 1996 to 2007. Governor, it's always good to have you on. Before we get to that border delegation, I, I wanted your take on the Senate's border deal that finally came down last night. $20 billion going to the border. It looks to end catch and release, boosts, you know, asylum standards. Uh, authorities can shut down the border once a certain threshold of crossings has been reached. Your thoughts on what you've seen thus far in the 370 pages? Well, Marky, what you just said sort of sums it up. 370 pages. And that's part of the problem. Congress always wants to throw a lot of stuff in one great big bill, hoping that people will like enough that they'll overcome their distaste for the rest. But this is like asking everybody from the Democrats and the Republicans, from the House and the Senate, to go into the kitchen, everybody bring your own spoon and your own spice, walk <laughs> up to the pot, stir it up, and somehow it's supposed to taste good. It tastes awful, and that's the problem. You can't have that many chefs working on it. They need to take this issue and divide it into the pieces that make sense. Take the Israel piece, take the Ukraine piece, take the border piece, take these various parts of the bill and vote on them up and down individually. That's so not what they're doing. And it just doesn't work and it's not going anywhere. Mike Johnson is right. It's DOA in the House. Yeah, uh, obviously you're an advocate for separating everything. So are you telling Republicans not to uh, agree to this deal? Uh, you know, they're going to do what they're going to do. I think they're going to not agree to the deal because they look at it and they say, this is a farce. It's it's. You're trying to throw too many things into one bill. You love to call it the bipartisan bill. They ought to call it the bipolar bill because it's more about taking people uh, who are at opposite ends of the spectrum and trying to make it appear that everybody has come together. They're sitting around the campfire. They're singing Kumbaya. Instead, they need to throw this into the campfire, go back, look at the individual pieces, things that really are connected. The things in this bill are not connected. And, and govern. That's how it's supposed to be done. Yeah. But this is not governing. This is really showmanship. Yeah, we'll see where this heads from here uh, in the coming days. And now let's get back to Texas, the federal fight that that state and, and Abbott is putting up. In your eye, because there's a lot of, you know, back and forth here. Does the Constitution really back up Abbott in these deterrence measures that he's enforced with the razor wire, banning federal agents from certain sectors? Uh, how do you see things? I think he is on solid ground because uh, he has a responsibility to protect the people of Texas. What we do have at the border is nothing short of an invasion. And you don't have to go to Texas to see that. You can go to New York City, Chicago, Washington, D.C., other major cities that used to brag about being sanctuary cities. They're not bragging about it anymore because now you've got places just last week in Boston. I saw a mother. It was heartbreaking. Her kids, four children that she has, can't go to the community center. The only place they have to go and play and have some time as kids, they can't go there anymore because they turned the community center into a, a home for illegal immigrants who came here beyond the law. And they're being housed, they're being fed, they're being cared for. Uh, we, we simply can't afford it. But this tragedy is, who's really paying for this? It's not the wealthy people. Their kids have plenty of options. But the poor families, like this mother of four children, a single mom, she has no other options. Why isn't she, as a tax-paying citizen, being given a little bit more consideration than people who broke the law by coming across the border and an administration that looked the other way while almost 10 million people have snuck in? And you bring me to, you know, you bring up New York, you bring up these sanctuary cities. Your thoughts, just before I let you go, on these prepaid debit cards that are now coming forward in New York. And, and I know, I know you can't, but I mean, explain that to me. You have Mayor Eric Adams crying out for help from the federal government, begging the influx to stop, but then you incentivize migrant families to come forward because these cards will cover grocery bills, baby expenses. Riddle me that. What, what do you make of it? Yeah, you know, Marky, if this were all about helping a baby have formula or having a diaper, I think a lot of us would feel differently. But this is about military age young men from China, Iran, from all over the world. And they're showing up at the southern border. They've been incentivized. They know that if they come, they're going to get a card. They're going to get to see America. They'll stay in a hotel. They'll be fed. They have medical needs. They'll be taken care of. We are sending a message to the rest of the world that we're suckers. We are absolute suckers. Come on over and uh, we'll take care of you. And
Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.